Welcome to the navigation training flight. I've engaged the autopilot to keep the aircraft level and on course, so please do not touch any input controls outside of the training commands you will receive. In this flight, we'll overview the navigation systems of the A-10C and practice navigation procedures. If you find it hard to hear my instructions over the background noise, exit the mission and turn down the world and in cockpit sound sliders to about 50% in the options menu. Increase throttle to about 90% core RPM to keep the aircraft above 250 knots indicated. The A-10C is equipped with a complex navigation suite consisting of a number of different systems. The oldest of these, originally installed on the A-10A, is a Heading Attitude Reference System, or HARS. HARS is a gyro platform navigation system and accumulates significant errors as the aircraft is maneuvered in flight. It can be reset accurately only in level flight and no acceleration. Because of these limitations, HARS is considered a backup system used in case of primary navigation system failure. The primary navigation system of the A-10C is the embedded GPS, INS, or EGI, often pronounced IGI. The IGI integrates a traditional inertial navigation system, INS, and a global positioning system, GPS. Each of these two IGI components can function independently of the other. However, they are designed to work together to provide accurate worldwide position and flight navigation data. Finally, the A-10C is equipped to home on traditional radio navigation systems such as TACAN, Tactical Air Navigation, ILS, Instrument Landing System, and ADF, Automatic Direction Finder. The primary control panels used to configure the navigation systems include the Navigation Mode Select Panel, MIMSIP, on the front dash and the Control Display Unit, CDU, on the right console. In this mission, we'll also work with the TACAN panel on the right console. In order to minimize the time spent head down configuring the instruments instead of looking up and out of the cockpit, the A-10C features the upfront controller, UFC, below the HUD and the CDU repeater page on the MFCD. These allow you to manipulate CDU data without having to touch the CD. Navigation information is displayed to the pilot on the HUD, the TAD and CDU pages of the MFCD, the CDU display, and the analog ADI and HSI instruments on the front dash. Let's begin taking a more detailed look at each component of the navigation suite. The NIMSIP, located in front of the control stick toward the bottom of the front dash, is used to select the navigation system used to feed data to the instruments and what type of navigation points to home on. Specifically, the top row of select buttons selects between HARS, IGI, and TISL, target identification set laser. You will generally use the IGI as your primary navigation system, and you can see that it is selected by default. Like HARS, TISL is an A-10A legacy system that has been replaced on the A-10C by the ANAAQ-28 Lighting 2 targeting pod. Along the bottom row of the NIMSIP are buttons to set the type of navigation points to home on. These include STRPT, steer point, ANCHR, anchor point, TCN, TACAN beacon, and ILS, instrument landing system. During flight operations, you will usually navigate toward a steer point, so STRPT will be the preferred selection. TACAN and ILS are used for airbase approaches and landing, and anchor point is usually the mission bullseye. In review, the selections of source navigation system on the top row and the type of navigation points on the bottom row determine which system provides steering information presented on the HUD, ADI, and HSI and toward what type of navigation point. The PTR switch is used to stow away the pitch and roll steering bars, as well as the course warning flag on the ADI. The two homing lights to the right of the select buttons indicate VHF or UHF radio homing when either radio is used in ADF mode. The next item we will consider is the TAD page, currently displayed on the left MFCD. The TAD includes symbology for your aircraft, currently in the center of the display a flight plan course line, currently running along the center from top to bottom, and various other indications, which we will discuss separately. To work with the TAD page, we need to set it as our sensor of interest, SOAR. To do so, press and hold the Hold Task Cooley Hat left command or the H key on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can press the TAD OSB 15. When set as SOAR, the display will become inscribed in green. Okay. Now that we have control of the TAD, 
Let's first scale the map out so we can see our entire flight plan for better orientation. To increase the TAD scale, press the Hold Task Demons Down command or the N key on the keyboard until the flight plan is visible. Three presses in this case. You can now see our flight plan consists of six waypoints, indicated by square symbols connected by course lines. The currently selected waypoint, called a steer point, is colored yellow instead of green. Also note the TAD range in the upper right corner of the display, currently 40, and the map scale. The range value indicates the range to the outer ring of the display. It's important to understand the concept of waypoints. Waypoint is the generic term for all navigation points of interest, which can include the current steer point, all flight plan waypoints, mark points, and anchor points. Generally, you will be following a flight plan that consists of a number of flight plan waypoints, one of which will be usually selected as your current steer point. Using the CDU, you can edit, create, and delete waypoints either as part of a flight plan or as independent waypoints. Let's try performing the most basic navigation function of cycling through the flight plan waypoints to select the current steer point. This can be done either by pressing the steer rocker key on the UFC or the steer switch on the CDU. I've highlighted both and you can try pressing both. Watch the TAD display and the data block in the bottom right corner of the HUD as you cycle through the flight plan waypoints. Press the spacebar key to proceed once you cycle through the waypoints. You can also cycle waypoints by using HOTAS controls. To do this, first make the HUD soy by pressing the HOTAS coolie hat up once or the U key on the keyboard. An asterisk will appear on the left side of the HUD when it is set as soy. With the HUD set as soy, you can cycle through the waypoints by pressing the HOTAS demons up or down commands repeatedly. Set waypoint 3 Copignati as your steer point. As you can see indicated on the HUD steer point data block, the HUD waypoint has a custom ID Copignati. If you cycle to the following waypoint, it also has a custom ID Poti. Mission waypoints are assigned a default ID of MSN XXX, where XXX is a numerical value starting with 001. Mark points are also assigned an alphabetical ID starting with A. Custom waypoint IDs can be created in the mission planner prior to the mission or in flight by using the CDU waypoint edit functions. Waypoint IDs can also be used to search for waypoints in the CDU database. Make sure you have waypoint 3 Copignata set as the steer point and we'll turn north toward it to continue our flight. I'm going to disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn. Autopilot is off. You have control. Autopilot is on. Let's review steer point indication presented to the pilot. Starting with the HUD, the destination index indicates the position of the current steer point as a small square. When not set elsewhere by the pilot, the current steer point is also the center point of interest, speed. On the TAD page, the speed is displayed as a wedding cake symbol currently corresponding with waypoint 3. In the bottom right corner of the HUD display is the navigation data block, which indicates information regarding the steer point. Starting with the top line, the following is displayed. Radar altitude valid through 5,000 feet AGL, steer point number and ID, steer point distance to go and target elevation, steer point time to go, TTG, and time on target, TOT Delta, also current time. When a steer point has a designated time on target, DTOT, you can use the TTG and TOT numbers to make sure you arrive on time. In that case, you will also see a desired airspeed indication added under the airspeed indicator on the left side of the HUD. In the bottom center of the HUD is the heading tape, 
which indicates the current heading and desired heading bug to direct the pilot to the desired heading of the selected waypoint. When the steer point is outside the HUD field of view, the destination index will be latched to the side of the HUD in the direction of the steer point. To see this indication, set waypoint for Ponte as your steer point. The destination index is now latched to the left side of the HUD and includes two pieces of additional information, the degrees of turn remaining on top of the index and the steer point range under the index. If you change the speed from the steer point to a different location, the destination index on the HUD will change to a tadpole to avoid confusion with the target designation cue TDC symbol. To see this indication, let's designate a speed point on the ground. Press and hold the hold test slew control down or the period key on the keyboard to slew the TDC down toward the bottom of the HUD. Then press and hold the hold test TMIS up command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard to designate a speed just ahead of the aircraft. The HUD is now indicating both the Tadpole Destination Index and the speed location as a TDC with a line leading to the total velocity vector. The Tadpole is latched to the side of the HUD in the direction of the steer point, and the Tadpole tail is indicating bearing to the steer point relative to your current position. Let's now discuss the CDU. First, set the right MFCD as a CDU repeater. To do so, press the Hold Task Cooley Hat Right command, or press the K key on the keyboard twice to cycle the CDU page, or press the CDU OSB 13 on the right MFCD. As you can see, the right MFCD is duplicating the display of the CDU. We can now work with the CDU directly, or use the UFC and MFCD commands to view and edit CDU data. The CDU is currently displaying the waypoint page as indicated by the page title in the top left corner of the display. The top line also indicates the name of the currently active flight plan, F1 in this case, and the waypoint number of the steer point. The rest of the CDU display on this page is used to present data on the waypoint indicated on the third line, which is not necessarily the same waypoint as our current steer point. This allows you to view and edit waypoints without deselecting the active steer point information on the HUD and front dash instrumentation. For example, to view or edit the data for our current steer point, which is waypoint 4 Pulte, we can select this waypoint on the CDU by searching either for the waypoint number or the ID. Let's try searching for the number first. To do so, press the 4 key on the UFC. You will see the number appear on the UFC scratch pad at the bottom of the HUD and the CDU page of the MFCD. Then press OSB 19 to enter the number into search. You should now see detailed information about waypoint 4 Bote on the CDU, including the waypoint elevation, desired time on target, and coordinates. Note as indicated on the bottom right corner of the CDU page, this is page 1 of 2 of the display. To see the additional information on page 2, press the function key on the UFC followed by the data down rocker key. Page 2 displays additional waypoint information and options, including command steering indication scales, steering origin destination setting, desired time to go, desired time on target, and vertical navigation setting. Once you've looked over page 2 of the waypoint page, return to page 1 by pressing the UFC function key followed by the data up rocker key. Now let's try the alternate method and search for a waypoint by ID. Let's also try using the CDU instead of the UFC to enter the data. Using the keyboard buttons on the CDU, Type in KOP as the initial characters of the ID for waypoint 3, Copignati, and then press the line select key R3 on the CDU to enter it into search. While we are working with the CDU, it's a good time to cover the important functionality of the steer point and page select dials on the auxiliary avionics panel, AAP. The steer point dial selects between waypoint databases. When set to flight plan, the CDU will cycle through flight plan waypoints only. When set to mark, 
the CDU will cycle through mark points only. When set to mission, the CDU will cycle through all non-marked points in the database, including the flight plan waypoints. Note that the flight plan will appear on the TAD page only when the dial is set to flight plan. The page dial selects between main pages of the display. When set to waypoint, the waypoint main page will be displayed, indicating information on the selected waypoint. When set to steer, the steer point main page will be displayed, indicating information on the selected steer point. When set to position, the position main page will be displayed, indicating information on the aircraft's current position. The other page is used to edit data in the CDU. When not set to other, all of the other pages are read only and no data can be entered into the CDU. Set waypoint 4 POTI as your steer point. I will disengage the autopilot so you can turn west toward waypoint 4. Autopilot is off. You have control. Autopilot is on. To navigate a flight plan accurately, you need to fly along the desired course line for each waypoint. To do so, set the HSI course arrow to the desired course for the waypoint and follow the course deviation indicator CDI on the HSI. For example, our flight plan calls for a course of 270 for waypoint 4. To obtain correct CDI indication, set the HSI course to 270 by rotating the HSI course set knob. Press the spacebar key to proceed when the HSI course is set to 270. The HSI course deviation indicator, CDI, and the ADI steering bar will now direct you toward the desired course line. In order to approach the waypoint on the desired course, you would maneuver the jet to follow the ADI steering bar toward the CDI until the CDI is aligned with the course arrow pointing toward the steer point and the steering bar is centered on the ADI. Press the space bar key to proceed to the next lesson topic. Let's now try homing on a TACAN station. To do this, first select TCN navigation mode on the NIMSEL. Now we need to set the desired TACAN channel. For example, to home in on the Sanaki Takan station, we'll set it to 31X. First, roll the mouse wheel up over the left channel selector knob to set the second channel digit to 3. Roll the mouse wheel up over the right channel selector knob to set the third channel digit to 1. Now power up the TACCAM receiver by setting the mode dial to TR, Transmit Receive. Set. The bearing pointer 1 needle on the HSI is now indicating bearing to the selected TACCAM station and the range indicator on the HSI is indicating the range. You can also hear the TACCAM station's ID being transmitted in Morse code. You can turn down the TACCAM ID volume using the volume knob on the TACAN control panel. If a TACAN approach is desired on a particular heading, turn the HSI set course knob to the desired course. The HSI, CDI, and ADI steering bar will then indicate steering commands for the set course toward the TACAN station. Press the space bar key to proceed when set. We'll end this lesson here. You can continue to practice using the navigation Warning, system to autopilot. navigate the flight plan waypoints.